I know that he lives, that he made us in his image, that he sent his divine Son, our Savior, to show us the way of life and redeem us from death, that he'll enter into our lives as fully as we let him, that his church and gospel and way of life are on earth and here with us, and that we'll realize our highest possibilities if we accept the counsel God has given, and that we'll fall somewhere short of what we might have been or might have had if we run contrary to his commandments. I know by the revelations of the Holy Ghost to my soul that God our Heavenly Father lives, that he sent his only begotten Son into the world to work out the infinite and eternal atonement and that he has restored in these last days the fullness of his everlasting gospel. My brethren and sisters, I want to bear witness to you as to the divinity of this work. From the center of my heart, to the ends of my fingers and toes, I know this is the work of God. I know the gospel has been restored. I know that the men who are leading the church are inspired and directed by him who appointed them. I know that this gospel will roll forth until it fills the whole earth, and I'm looking forward to the time when all of us will be united on the other side and carry on the great work which we have so falteringly tried to do here on earth. When we see the signs of our times as foretold by the prophets and by the Master himself, and we see what's happening in the things transpiring before us in our day and in the church that we have been witnessing as the, some of the most dramatic things that you can testify that you're watching, and you're seeing what the Lord is unraveling for the need of the people today, May I paraphrase what the Lord has said in that great revelation, the 88th section. Any man who hath seen any or the least of these happenings hath seen God today moving in his majesty and in his power. If we don't know where we came from and we don't know why we're here and we don't know where we're going or how to get there, we're just like a ship on the ocean without a rudder, a rudder, a sail, or anyone to guide it. We might keep afloat, but we'll never come into port. My church teaches me that I am a son of God, the Eternal Father, and therefore I have all of the attributes in embryo to develop like my father just like my sons have become like me and I became like my earthly father. I bear my testimony. It is divine. The Lord is at the helm. The church is true and all is well. God bless you, brothers and sisters. So we testify that Joseph Smith indeed was a modern prophet of God, raised up specially for the purpose we have described. And most solemnly we testify that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the Son of God, our Savior, our Redeemer, our Creator. We testify further that we are His ordained servants, and we speak by the power that he's restored to us and given to us in this day. And we testify in all solemnity that this work in which we are engaged is verily true. And as pertaining to Jesus Christ, I testify that he is the Son of the living God who was crucified for the sins of the world. He is our Lord, our God, and our King. This I know of myself, independent of any other person. I am one of his witnesses. 
And in the coming day, I shall feel the nail marks in his hands and in his feet and shall wet his feet with my tears. But I shall not know any better then than I know now that he is God's almighty son, that he is our savior and redeemer, and that salvation comes in and through his atoning blood and in no other way. I testify to you that the fullness of joy can only come through the atonement of Jesus Christ and by obedience to all the laws, ordinances, and, go and gospel, which are only in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. To all these things I humbly testify and bear my solemn witness and that they are true to know who we are is important, but to know where we are in relationship to our earthly home and heavenly home is essential if we are to receive all the blessings our Father in heaven has for those who love him and keep his commandments. Our eternal home is our ultimate destination. Jesus is the Christ, the Savior of the world. Certainly, he is the center of our worship and the key to our happiness. Let us follow the Son of God in all ways and all walks of life. Let us make him our exemplar and our guide. The gospel is true. I know it. I am a witness of it. I testify to you that God has known you individually, brethren, for a long, long time. He has loved you for a long, long time. He not only knows the names of all the stars, he knows your names and all your heartaches and your joys. By the way, you have never seen an immortal star. They finally expire. But seated by you tonight are immortal individuals, imperfect, but who are nevertheless trying to be like Jesus. The Savior has offered to all of us a precious peace through his atonement, but this can come only as we are willing to cast out negative feelings of anger, spite, and revenge. For all of us who forgive those who trespass against us, even those who have committed serious crimes, the atonement brings a measure of peace and comfort. I affirm my witness of the calling of the prophet Joseph of his works of the sealing of his testimony with, the, with his blood as a marvel to the eternal truth. Each of you can bear witness of the same thing. You and I are faced with a stark question of accepting the truth of the first vision and that which followed it. On the question of its reality lies the very validity of this church if it is truth, and I testify that it is, then the work in which we are engaged is the most important work on the earth. Because Jesus Christ suffered greatly, understand, he understands our suffering, he understands our grief. So we experience hard things that we too may have increased compassion, understanding for others. We came to mortal life precisely to grow from trials and testings. Challenges help us become more like our Father in heaven, and the atonement of Jesus Christ makes it possible.
to endure those challenges, I testify that as we actively come into Him, we can endure every temptation, every heartache, every challenge we face. I'm so grateful for the blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ, for the power of repropriation, for the power of redemption, for the atonement, the atonement which can wash clean every stain, no matter how difficult or how long or how many times repeated, the atonement can put you free again to move forward cleanly and worthily to pursue that path that you have chosen in life. Let me close by bearing my witness and my nine decades on earth fully qualify me to say this, that the older I get, the more I realize that family is the center of life. It is the key to eternal happiness. Brothers and sisters, now more than ever, we cannot be part-time disciples. We cannot be a disciple on just one point or doctrine or another. The constellation of characteristics that result from faith in Christ, including the ones we have talked about today, are all necessary to our standing strong in these last days as we earnestly strive to be true disciples of Jesus Christ, these characteristics will be interwoven, added upon, and interactively strengthened in us. What will protect us from the sin and evil so prevalent in the world today? I maintain that a strong testimony of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and of His gospel will help us through to safety. If you're not reading the Book of Mormon each day, please do so. If you'll read it prayerfully and with a sincere desire to know the truth, the Holy Ghost will manifest its truth to you. It is true, and I solemnly testify that it is. Then Joseph Smith was a prophet who saw God, the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. Because the Book of Mormon is true, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is the Lord's Church on the earth, and the Holy Priesthood of God has been restored for the benefit and blessing of His children. I so testify with all my heart in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.